In order to demonstrate the effects of the ECO-R1 restriction enzyme, it must first be purified. To purify an enzyme simply means to isolate it from whatever else might be in its current solution. To do so, we can take advantage of the fact that it is bound to be larger or smaller than other compounds that happen to be in the solution. By allowing the solution to flow through a cellulose matrix, we can separate the molecules by size. The smallest molecules will navigate the matrix the most quickly and will be captured in the first test tube. The next tube should capture the second quickest and therefore second smallest molecules and so on. The last molecules to make their way through the cellulose matrix will be the largest. In this way, the solution has been divided into fractions according to molecule size. To begin, vertically mount the column on a ring stand. Make sure the spout on the bottom is capped. Stir the cellulose mixture and then carefully pipette it down the side of the column. Place an empty beaker under the column and release the cap so that the fluid can run out and the cellulose is packed to the bottom. Label eight tubes, one through eight. Add one milliliter of unpurified EcoR1 solution and allow it to completely enter the column. Remove the spout cap and capture three milliliters in each of the first two tubes. Put them on ice. For tubes three and four, add six milliliters of 0.1 molar potassium chloride solution. Collect three milliliters in each tube. Continue this process for the rest of the tubes using 0.2 molar solution for tubes five and six and 0.5 molar solution for tubes seven and eight. Now one of the tubes contains the EcoR1 enzyme. To find out which one, we'll add the contents of each tube to a sample of DNA and see which one cuts it. Label nine microtest tubes, one through eight, and one control tube. Pipette 30 microliters of qualified water into each tube. Add five microliters of buffer and five microliters of DNA. Add 10 microliters of each fraction to the corresponding microtest tube. Do not add a fraction sample to the control tube. Place them in a 37 degree water bath for 15 minutes. When the samples are ready, they'll be loaded into an electrophoresis gel to compare the three samples. Agaros gel electrophoresis is a common method of isolating regions of DNA. A gel tray is prepared with DNA samples placed in wells along one side. DNA molecules have a strong negative charge, so if an electric field is applied to the tray, they'll move toward the positive electrode. Agaros gels have microscopic pores, which act as a filter when molecules attempt to move through them. Smaller molecules will move through the gel more quickly than larger molecules. Those closest to the positive electrode are the smallest and those farthest away are the largest. Because only one of the fractions of the purified solution contains the ECOR1 enzyme, one lane will contain smaller lengths of DNA than the others. If one lane has bands significantly lower than the rest, you have successfully purified the ECOR1 enzyme.